Hey gang, what's up? Hope everybody out there is doing good and really appreciate you guys making some time out of your day to watch the video. Always grateful for that. Today, I'm going to give you guys some tips and advice on fishing swim jigs in the fall. And really, we're going to cover some of the, the common mistakes people make with swim jigs. Because it's swim jig fishing, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than what most people give it credit for. So I'm going to give you guys some really good juice that's going to help you improve your swim jig fishing if you already do it or if you don't know much about it i'm gonna give you guys a good foundation for it. it's gonna help you guys catch them because it's man in my opinion it's one of the funnest ways to catch a bass i'm um, real quick also i'm going to be talking a lot about the mega bass uzo swimmer swim jig um, they got a really good stock of these at bait works here in springfield um, i'll include the link in the description you can order them online um, it's a great way to help the channel out if you'd like to use that link much appreciated Okay, guys, um, I think a lot of people don't, that when they think about swim jigs, they don't think about swim jigs in terms of fishing them in the fall much. I think a lot of people consider a swim jig more of a spring lure, specifically after the fish spawn, when they're, uh, you know, shatter spawning, you know, the fish are guarding the fry and perch up shallow, that type of deal. But fall time of the year is one of the best times that I've ever found to fish a swim jig. Um, the fish are up in that zone a little bit. <clears throat> They're positioned where they can be caught on a swim jig, and I use one quite a bit. So I'm not going to go into the details as far as the type of swim jig that we're talking about here. We've we've done some videos on the past, just to reiterate real quick. Basically, you've got you got to, to simplify things. You've got a couple different uh, color selections. You've got some type of a a white or something that resembles a shad. Then you'll have you know some type of a bluegill pattern. And then uh, a lot of guys, you know, like some type of a black and blue or, you know, to some type of a crawdad imitator. Most of the time, guys, I use the perch pattern. I find that perch pattern with like a green trailer works pretty good. Um, and then second, the, secondary to that would be the shad pattern. But um, like I said, we're not going to get into the colors. What I wanted to talk about today is more specifically on how you want to work this bait and the type of areas you want to fish it in because this is really key on it. One of the things I think a lot of people goof up on in swim jig fishing is they they swim the jig in. A lot of people think a swim jig, you just throw it out there and reel it in. And you can catch some fish like that. But probably the one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give you guys when you're fishing a swim jig is you've got to get that thing moving erratically through the water. You don't just want it to come straight through the water allowing the, the tail to make all the action. Because most of the time on a swim jig, you're using a curly trailer. What I have found out, that you, can, if you can catch a few bass like that, but if you throw your swim jig out and just reel it in, you may catch five bass in the course of a day. But if you throw it out there, keep your rod tip high and shake that rod tip as you're reeling it all the way back in there, you're going to triple the amount of bites you get on there. There's by shaking that rod tip, it just really gives that fish a reaction strike. And another thing that I'll do is, it's, a lot of it depends on the type of cover I'm fishing. Say I'm fishing the swim jig shallow around a stump or something like that. You know, I'll cast it past there and I'll reel it up to the stump. And when it gets to that stump, I'll just pop it real hard and then just let it fall a little bit out of sight. It's, it's, it's typical reaction strike fishing. That's what you want to think about when you're fishing a swim jig. You're trying to get the fish to react to that bait and the more erratically you can come through the water with it, the better. Now, second to that, let's talk a little bit about the speed and the depth you want to work it. I have found out that um, probably 80% of the time, I want to keep that swim jig in sight or barely, barely out of sight and then bring it up into sight a little bit more. I don't, I don't ever want to get that bait down too deep 80% of the time. We'll talk about the other 20% here in a second, but I am looking for a visual strike. The best way to get a bass to bite a swim jig is you want to have that swim jig so shallow that when that fish hits it, you're going to see a commotion on the surface. You're not, you're not just going to be, you know, swimming that jig back and feel the bite. You're actually going to see a boil. So in order to do that, um, and a lot of it depends on the water clarity, you got to keep that bait pretty close to the surface or within six inches or so from the surface like that. There's something about the fish having to come up on a bait like that that will get them to hit it harder and it'll get them to hit it more often. It'll make them react to that. So make sure that you keep it up high. 
The second to that is what the, uh, the speed of your, your retrieve. Speed of your speed of retrieve is determined by two factors. It's determined by the water temperature and the water clarity. One of the things I found out about the dirtier the water that you're fishing, the slower you want to use the retrieve. And when you're using the slower retrieve, you have to use a lighter swim jig. I'll, I'm, let me give two different extremes here. Let's. I'll, I'll use, give an example. I was fishing the tournament Lake Dardanelle. Uh, several years back and the water visibility was muddy i mean it was like you maybe had an inch or two of visibility super super dirty water and there was some shallow grass and there was you know some fish up in this grass and i was getting a few of them to hit a swim jig but what i did to maximize that particular day is i took an, an eighth ounce swim jig and i filed the head down to where the head was only like a sixteenth of an ounce in in weight and I put a fairly large trailer on it and I could throw that thing out there and I could pump it and it was so light, it would just like go like this, almost like in slow motion. It was really easy to work it on that shallow, dirty water like that and caught a bunch of really good fish. So let the water, you know, temperature and water clarity determine. The clearer the water, warmer the water, the faster you wanna work your swim jig to get, you know, because it's a sight bait. The dirtier the water or the cooler the water, the slower you want to work it. That's going to be real a key on that. Another thing about it, let's talk about line. A lot of guys fish a swim jig with braided line. I do not like braided line on a swim jig. And there are a couple different reasons on this. Most of the time, um, when you're swim jig fishing, you're not way out from the boat. It's not like you're making a long cast. So a lot of times when you set that hook on braided line, it's a little too much. You're gonna tear that fish's mouth unless you get it in a bony part and you're gonna lose a lot of fish. If, the, if that fish hits sort of in a membrane part, like on both sides of their mouth up here, you know, when you set that hook hard, you're gonna rip a hole in that fish's mouth with braid. Secondly with that is when I'm dropping that bait down, even if I'm dropping it that far down, I don't want the fish to be able to see that 50 pound test braided line, if, even if it's six inches underwater. So I found out I get a lot more bites. I use 25, 20 to 25 pound test Seaguard Vizx fluorocarbon line. Um, I, I just think that you get more bites with fluorocarbon line and you don't lose as many fish. And since I'm using fluorocarbon line and since I'm pitching and flipping the swim jig around cover, I put it on a flipping stick. I use that Mega Bass Alkley's flipping stick, 20, 25 pound test fluorocarbon line. And it's almost like I'm pitching and flipping the jig because when I'm working down a shoreline, um, I make a lot of pitches and flips with the skim, swim jig, like under a dock or under a lay down or under overhanging tree. I don't do a lot of skipping and casting with it. I just get a lot more bites with it. <clears throat> and I can seem like I control the bait better and, con and con control the fish as well. And finally, let's talk a little bit about areas. In the fall time of the year, one of the best places to fish a swim jig is in the back end of the coves. In the back end of the coves, you, this time of year, you've got a lot of bait fish back there. You've still got a lot of perch, crawdads. you got a lot of shallow cover, and you got a diversity of water clarity. It just seems like what I like to do is get about two-thirds of the way back into any cove off the creek or a main lake. Just cover that area, fish any visible shoreline targets, move to the next one. So anyway, guys, give it a try. Swim jigs in the fall, good way to catch them, fun way to catch them, exciting way to catch them. And uh, just give it a try if you haven't done it. And um, I think you guys will really be happy with the results. So thanks again, guys. Much appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button and the notification button. We'll talk later. See you.